Good evening. Hello. Hey, Ada. How are you? I'm well and yourself. Good. Good. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hi, Ada. Hey, Primo. How are you? Mia. Yeah. That's not that's not Warren Burke. That's another Burke. Yeah, Warren spells his name differently. Yeah, it's Flatbush Beacon Burke. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Good to see you. Hey. Flatbush Beacon in the house. Yes, we are. We, <laughs> we are on the agenda tonight. So excited to uh, talk to you. I think it's going to be you in the end. Okay. Yeah. It's the freeness. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the freeness and the non vaccinations. Both yeah, of those. Which I help. think might change now with this new mandate. Yeah. So right, the mandate is for after school programs for five through 11 year olds. But I don't know. It's also possible that Eric Adams rolls everything back as soon as he gets in because he seems like a bit of a psycho when it comes to yeah. vaccinations. We'll see how this works out. Kind of up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Every Frank. month a different thing, right? <laughs> yeah, it is a constantly changing landscape. So all we can do is the best with the information that we have at the moment and go from there. What is your role at, at, at uh, I feel like we've been on so many emails together, but like we haven't really like. Uh, I'm the outreach coordinator for the okay. center. Okay, cool. So Flatbush Beacon has like a center as well as a school. Right. Well, the center is the school. Okay, okay. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, we've been on a lot of emails over the years. Yep. But we were in a meeting together probably like two years ago last or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, and yeah. is Jawara still there? Yes, he's still the director. Okay, cool. How's he doing? He's awesome. He should be popping in, but we also have like night program tonight. Oh. So we'll see if he can pop in. So like wearing a lot of hats. Well, thank you for all the work that you're doing. I know that it must be a lot both last year and this year. Yes, it's constantly <laughs> changing sure. requirements and what have you so yeah i'm sure um okay cool i feel like maybe we should start to be respectful of everybody's time um and see like Felicia, just let me know that she's running a little bit later that she might join with her camera off because she's still out running some errands Seven o'clock is both late and early. Um, Joyce, hello, good to see you. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, I missed the last one. Holiday season is wild for nonprofits, so. Yeah, so your food bank, am I getting that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. Oh, wow, yeah. I'm sure that now is probably like the busiest time of year for you. It's right? the most insane time of year. <laughs> Okay, well, I feel like we got some we got some new faces on the call, or at least faces who haven't been with us for for a while. So maybe we can just do a quick round of introductions uh, for everybody. Because Joyce, I don't know if you've met Ada and Danique. I mean, yeah. Um, so why don't we do uh, why don't we do a quick round of introductions? Um, I'll kick things off. Hi, I'm Primo. <laughs> I'm the chair of the Youth Services Committee. Uh, grateful to have you all here with me tonight. Um, I run a nonprofit called Reading Partners here in New York and worked in college access for a long time before that. Um, and I live uh, between um, Washington and Franklin on Crown Street. Um, on that, that part of Crown Heights, that corner of Crown Heights. Uh, so I will pass it over to Ada. Ada, do you want to say hello? Sure. 
Hello, um, I'm Ada. I'm a former board member, but I'm not a board member now. So I'm a community member and I still want to stay involved with the youth committee. Um, I am pretty much retired and um, <laughs> that's, about, that's about it. I just want to say as involved as possible, especially in the youth. Awesome, awesome. thanks for being here, Ada. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to pass it to somebody? Uh, let me, let's see. Oh, Matthijs. <laughs> I'll pass it to Matthijs. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, I just dropped in. I'm uh, assuming we're doing a, a round of introductions. You got it. Um, all right. My name is Matthijs, uh, community board member since, I want to say this is like year six or something like that. Um, I live uh, on Rutland Road in uh, Lefferts Gardens um, with my family, two daughters, uh, and I am a, a school social worker currently. Um, and I've uh, been uh, with uh, this committee uh, since uh, I started at the board. Awesome. And Thank I'm you, Juan. To, uh, I pass it. Who didn't go yet? Did Rashida um, go? Rashida didn't go yet. I passed to Rashida. Hi, everyone. Sorry for the tardy, just running in from work. Um, Rashida Sadiq, um, been on the community board since 2017 um, and have been on the Youth Services Committee for that time as well. Um, been part of the neighborhood since over 30 years now, lived and grew up in the school district as well. I'm looking forward for another year of great activities. Right on. Good to see you. Do you want to pass it to somebody? Um, well, I know you're entering late, so you don't know who's gone yet. Yes. Um, but uh, I'll pass. We'll pass it along to to Mia. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Mia Hilton. I am the assistant district manager for CB Nine. And I am also a resident of the community. Um, and I'm happy to be here this evening. One of my favorite committees. One of? Who's your favorite? Oh, wow, Primo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll my talk about it later. Committee. We'll talk about it later. It's OK. It's OK. All right, you got to pass it now. <laughs> I'll pass it over to Joyce. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joyce. I am a resident of Lefferts Gardens, and I work along with um, the Food Bank for New York City to alleviate hunger in the five boroughs. That's our overall goal. Awesome. And then we'll pass it. Awesome. I guess the team from Flatbush Beacon is all that's left. So Danique, do you want to kick things off, please? Sure. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Danique Burke. I am the outreach coordinator for Flatbush Beacon Center. Um, we are a beacon under Mega Evers CUNY Research Foundation, and we support um, programming for ages, well, gosh, we do all ages, from elementary to adult age programming in the community and linking community partnerships. Um, we've been a part of the community board now, I think like maybe three years. Um, yeah, because we posted the last two um, uh, career uh, job fairs um, at our Beacon Center. So we've been here a while. <laughs> so we're just happy to be back and back to connect with you guys. Um, I'm going to pass it over to our director, Joara Hudson, who was joining us as well. Good evening, everyone. Everything uh, Ms. Burke said, Joara Hudson, Flavish Beacon Center director. Uh, same time, same everything as Ms. Burke. <laughs> Good to see your faces. Good to see you too. We're we're delighted to have Flatbush Beacon join us for this meeting, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about the Youth Services Career Fair um, or Job Expo or whatever the title is. Um, Y'all are very much on the agenda. Thank you for offering your space to us. Um, I think you're probably going to sway the votes in a certain direction. We're just talking about whether um, to host the event at uh, Flatbush Beacon or the Major R. Owens Community Center. And then we'll we'll get into the rest, which is just kind of finalizing some dates and talking about vendors and, and the things that we need to um, 
get this train really moving out the station in terms of the, the jobs expo. So that's our agenda for the evening. Mia has graciously agreed to take minutes for our committee. Just so you know, every committee is supposed to take minutes. And so you have been, you've been blessed by Mia's presence because it means that nobody has to take minutes today. Uh, that is, if anything, a sign that we are in fact her favorite committee uh, number one. So, um, Let's get into the good stuff. So <clears throat> last meeting, we asked to do a little bit of outreach around this jobs expo that we would like to host in March or April. And um, what we talked about was, my dog is bothering me, I'm sorry. Um, we talked about reaching out to potential hosts and we also talked about reaching out to vendors. So those were things that uh, we did. And we reached out to Flatbush Beacon Center, um, who responded in the affirmative that uh, yes, they would be able to host our job expo. So thank you very much for that kind offer. Um, just to dig into the details a little bit further, um, as of right now, vaccinations are not required for students, but we know that this has been a, a, a very rapidly changing um, landscape, and it's certainly liable to change again, as it basically just changed yesterday, and then there's going to be a new administration entering in January, which is almost certainly going to change things again. Um, we also just found out that all private entities also need to have full vaccinations for adults. And so the availability of the vaccine for young people is also gonna shift things. Um, so anyway, just to name that, but they have offered to host us for free. And then on the other hand, the, the so thank you. Um, the Major R. Owens Community Center has also sent us their kind of structure of things that they would expect. So they said, yes, we'd be happy to host you. They would have vaccination required for both youth and adults. Um, and they would be charging us $150 per hour. So I would probably name that at about 450 <laughs> Jawara. <laughs> yeah, woo, right? So they usually charge $450. And what they've said is that $450 per hour. And so their community fee, their other community discount is to reduce us by one third um, to $150 per hour. It is still costly. And that is money that we could probably be placing elsewhere um, or just time that we would not have to spend fundraising. I would argue that we could probably fundraise that money, um, but it would take more energy and it would take away energy from doing things like <clears throat> speaking to vendors um, or talking to schools. Um, I will add two last things that I think are kind of like a benefit in both directions. One, if we host at Flatbush Beacon, we ostensibly get access to their students as well, who we would hope would attend the jobs fair. And I think that would be a great plus. Um, at the Major R. Owen Center, we maybe have a little bit of um, upside on both uh, advertising to the clientele that use the center, as well as inviting the nonprofits who currently live in the space to um, both be jobs vendors and also to advertise to their clientele. But I'd love to hear from this group about what they feel like we should do um, and anything that we should keep in mind when weighing these two options. Matthias, go for it. I love the raised hand. We're so civil. What a great group. Thank you, uh, Primo, for acknowledging my raised hand. Um... No, at first, like, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but the fact that they will charge us at Major Owens, I think is outrageous. Um, I don't know if we can do something about that. Uh, um, what would that include? Like, what, what, what do they offer? Is it just the space or like, are there tables? Are there, you know, what, 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 what comes with that? That's what I'm wondering. And, um, you know, I know at, at, at uh, the Beacon Center, we, we had to rent tables and, and um, chairs. I don't think that was very costly, but it was definitely money. Um, Mia probably remembers that. I want to say, what was that now? Like 200 bucks or something like that? Um, maybe a little bit more. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to do it this at, uh, at Major Owens if we could do it for free. I think that, that should be doable right i don't know how people think about that. that's what i got we said 
Thanks for us. We certainly tried. We could try again. Ask them to like lower their cost or something. But the other thing to take into consideration is that we're going to lose some students because of the vaccination requirement. But um, that's something to just something to consider. Um, other folks would love to hear your thoughts. I don't know if, if it's something uh, that could possibly, you know, depending on the date and, and, and the weather, uh, again, we, we have no control over that. If it's something that could be done outdoors as opposed to indoors, which would take away the, oh, oh I take that back. <laughs> I take that back. I just forget we had a, we have construction um, at our site, so we don't have the outdoors anymore. But, you know, maybe, if, if it's, you know, the weather pattern is good and it gets warm, maybe something we could do outside. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, are folks, are there concerns around health? And Joar, is that why you raise that? Because you feel like there are concerns around COVID spreading? I, I not, not necessarily for me per se, but, uh, you know, we, I'm, I'm just thinking as, you know, time's going and how everything is going, you know, they're, they're throwing out all these things and I'm sure they'll meet somewhere in the middle <laughs> with a lot of um, this stuff. As you said, you know, the downside is that, they, you know, they're most likely gonna require some, I don't know how fast it, it will happen, but they, you know, we're putting in place even to go to restaurants for kids, they have to have at least, you know, to be vaccinated and all that kind of stuff. A lot, a lot of children are vaccinated, which is, which is good, but we, you still have people who are not, so I don't know. That's helpful. Um, I kind of lean towards a place that has vaccination requirements just because it's going to be indoor and we're still, you know, in, a, um, so COVID is real. Um, and if we're going to be interacting with students and with vendors and multiple people, yes, we're going to be masked, but I kind of, in that sense, would be kind of leaning towards major tail because then it's not just us, like the facilities requiring it. Um, and, you know, that will be my, of course, no, I definitely them. also Thank with you. Matthias about them charging, you know, this is supposed to be a community facility and all, you know, but that's another rant. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe go back and see if they can lower it more um, or something like that. Okay, I hear that. I wonder, Jawara and, and Danique, uh, do you think that it's possible could we place a vaccination requirement on entering the event or would we need to follow the building's rules? No, um, I think we, we we could have our own. I mean, our rule is that everyone that comes in needs to be vaccinated other than the students. Mm -hmm. um, but if everything shifts or whatever, we can still require students to show proof or you know, if that's something we wanna promote yeah. as well when we're promoting the event just so that we can um, ensure that everyone is coming in safely. Yeah, that's helpful. Rashida, would that shift things for you? Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. I, mean, I, I think um, also just, just, you know, most of the places I'm assuming uh, that you're, that will be hiring will have a vaccination requirement, most, most. Than, than others. So if they're entering, that's a plus for the vendors that are there. Like, okay, this person's vaccinated because they got in. So there's a little bit of safety in understanding that these people who are coming in, it's not where you have to go, oh, well, we got to figure out if you're going to get vaccinated to work or, you know, it's kind of already there. So that was my thought on that. That's actually an excellent point. So, so sorry, just to clarify. So Juara and uh, Ronik, so for, to, for outside, so non-students to come in to your school building, there's no vaccination requirement or only for adults? Like how does it work for students? Right, the students, the, the people who are part of our programs don't need, the, the youth um, don't need a uh, vaccination. They just need to do a health screening um, to come into the building. But you, the youth who are coming in from the outside, they're not registered with us. So they, I don't think they're looked at as the same as the participants that we have here every day uh, in the program. Um, so 
that that's a you know we did we did an event here a couple of weeks uh, ago we had a lot of people here but people pre-registered for all of that and they they were able to give you know their vaccination stuff ahead of time uh and they brought it with them you know showed did the screening and then went through kind of thing but i, I would you know the people coming in will probably be looked at as outsiders coming in for an event so they would have to show proof to come in i think that's a good point by the way um that you make uh you are about the need for vaccination to be employed in the first place right um i know uh, last meeting i mentioned that um that jay-z event in madison square garden that did happen they had a couple thousand people there um they had vac vaccination requirements. That's an older population, but um, not necessarily young people, but there were young people there as well. Uh, so I would definitely go with uh, vaccination. I would go with that. And uh, just one more thing. Um, so to my question about um, Major Owens, do that, 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 does that come with anything? Does it come with tables? They haven't told us. We could ask, but we haven't asked. All right, because that's an extra expense, right? Well, I guess I mentioned that already. I have a question. Yes. Also, welcome. Um, Hi, so my name is Barbara Lindsay. This is my first time at this meeting. I do live in Community Nine in Evansfield, yes. and I was just trying to, um, as far as vaccinations are concerned, would would having people tested twenty four hours or forty eight hours before would that be satisfactory or comparable to someone being vaccinated? No, it wouldn't be. No, okay. they they would have to be vaccinated. Okay, I don't have a problem with it. I'm vaccinated. I'm just saying I would, <laughs> I'm like Rashida, I would prefer to have everyone yeah. vaccinated because, you know, I am a senior, first of all, and I would prefer that, you know, but I'm really not understanding. I came into the meeting a little late. I apologize, but I'd like to know what exactly are you planning? This is, um, I really don't understand what you guys are talking about speaking about because like I said I came in late so I was like trying to figure out. I know it's regarding youth services but are you trying to have something to raise money or are you just having something to offer venues um, a chance to showcase themselves or what yeah happy to fill you in and welcome so glad that you joined Thank us you. for this meeting um, I live across the street from you so we're neighbors okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, so what we are talking about is um, a, a youth jobs fair and so this is kind of going to be the biggest event that we host throughout the course of the year. And what that looks like is inviting local students uh, in high school primarily, but also some younger college students to come to a fair where we'll have vendors from the local community and across New York uh, who are going to talk about jobs that will be available to students both in the summer and long term. Uh, and so we are just talking about which spaces we would host this job fair at. And so there's kind of two spaces that are available, one being um, the Flatbush Beacon Center, uh, which Jawara and Tanik um, work at, and uh, the second would be the new community center, uh, the Major R. Owens Community right. Center. And so um, we're just thinking about spaces because we want to confirm a space and then lock in a date, and then we can begin to advertise this to local students and also confirm vendors who would come to the job fair. Um, and that's really what kind of what we're talking about today. Does that you feel caught up? Sure. Yeah. Now, would those vendors have to pay uh, uh, entrance fee or anything like that? No, this would be free okay. to all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just the fact that they want to charge to hold the venue there, one hundred fifty dollars an hour. Okay. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, I think the community center is getting <clears throat> a bit of a reputation uh, for not being <laughs> for lacking lowercase C on the community. Um, right, we're not being represented properly at all. Yeah, I understand. I know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think everyone's unhappy, and this is a good example of why everyone is unhappy and why they are getting a poor reputation. Um, and wow. even kind of the gall to ask us to pay one hundred fifty dollars for something right. that is literally being hosted by the community board for young people in the community. Um, something that it's, it might not even be worth going back to the table with them. I mean, sure, it's shiny and new and there's attractiveness there, but um, that's about it. Oh, I have a question. Um, yeah. Did the did the vendors, did anybody give a chance to reach out to the vendors and see if the vendors have a vaccine requirement? They will not go to a place that's not require vaccines or we don't know yet how they? 
So um, <clears throat> I sent a, a mass email out to the vendor list. Um, I think it was probably bad timing. I think I sent it like I don't know, the week before Thanksgiving or something, but I did hear back from two of them. Um, and both said, we would be happy to go to a space where there's not a vaccine requirement, but we would have a requirement for mask wearing. Um, and they'd, they'd like to engage. I think they'd be happy to obviously, doubly happy to come to a place where there is a vaccine requirement, especially considering the recent shift in um, rules in New York that in order to work anywhere, you need mm -hmm. to have a vaccine. And so that has changed after we uh, sent that outreach email, but um, they said they'd be comfortable going in masks. And maybe people didn't respond because <laughs> <laughs> we weren't requiring vaccines. I don't know. Um, I think it probably ups our likelihood of getting vendors into the space um, to require vaccines. For yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I'll, I'm just going to ask uh, Primo if we can know the specific dates that we're looking at because you know we do need to coordinate uh, as we're a co-located space. Uh, coordinate whether we're going to use the gym or the cafeteria kind of things just throwing it out there yeah absolutely um i'm just trying to pull up the document we had a list of potential dates also maybe we should do this in coordination with you now because y'all are working at it why don't you tell us what the best dates are frankly um that's kind of makes it easier, you know? I mean, you know the students, you're working in a school, you know which dates would be best for them in terms of coming. We were thinking of doing it on like a Wednesday or Thursday evening, like around like six o'clock. What we were hoping, or we are thinking, sorry, we are thinking like 4.30 to six or four o'clock to six, something like that, you know, after school, but still reasonably close enough to the end of school. So we could get kids either to stay after school for a little bit or, or come in from their local school. Tell me, tell me, tell me about your faces. Tell me about your reactions. <laughs> so Wednesdays is one of the academic uh, intervention uh, spaces for us. So it's, it's, I was thinking of like using the cafeteria, but that wouldn't work for uh, that set up um, un unless we move around programming for the day that depending on whatever day that is um, I mean we're flexible we could do a Tuesday I mean it doesn't tell us what works best for you Tuesdays are better um, I'm trying to pull up the DOE calendar so I can just make mm -hmm. sure when spring break is and we should not doing it do it during a break right oh no you're saying no uh, i was saying we could do it during a break um i don't know what's the but people will go away you know so it may be it may be a little rough to do it on the break so i i, I kind of agree 50 50 may, you know may, uh, are we are we so. are we against like a friday um, I would imagine that might be a little trickier for, for the vendors, but I could be wrong. Um, check me on my thinking. I feel like Fridays are just a little bit harder because people <laughs> don't want to sure. do something on Friday at four o'clock to six o'clock, but I could be wrong. I, I, I just, uh, Johnny, I don't know if you, if you're really, I, I just want to maybe avoid Wednesday, Thursdays as there's, um, academic programs. So there are other people in the building. So the other days there's very little of anybody. In the building and then we can lock it in early then you know we can kind of guarantee more or less how that works so the, the day doesn't mind it just it makes me choose the venue differently we'll probably just do the third floor again like we did before uh the gymnasium right when we did the first one um well i mean so yeah so uh, like a monday tuesday Friday probably will work best for us. Um, I think a Tuesday would be great. <clears throat> I don't see anything wrong with a Tuesday. Gives us a little bit of time to get our legs under us on Monday and then get it done on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, tell me which Tuesday in, in March. So I'm looking at the calendar for March. Um, there's nothing really at least school-wide look like issue. I don't see anything happening um, in March, per se. Um, they have testing, but that's like at the end, for middle school anyway, in the 
the end of March. Is March one of those in between months between the breaks? That... No, March, um, they have ELA assessments the 29th to the 31st um, for middle school. Um, and then spring recess would be April. So it wouldn't go, it's the April 15th this year. It's not early April, like sometimes it's been. Be happy to target something in late March, so maybe the weather will be slightly better. Um, yeah, so maybe like uh, the twenty second or the 29th. I like the twenty ninth, like the ring of that. Does does that work for folks on this call? Is that a date that is doesn't work for the any reason? Tuesday of the month. Yeah. I have nothing. Three more. So in the past, we we were always kind of at the end of March. Yeah. Yeah, so then that works? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's fine. Um, and then I, I know we, we always were, were middle of the week, but I, I don't see an issue with Tuesdays. Okay. Any objections from everyone else about Tuesday, March 29th? No, oh, sounds good. No? Sounds good. Sounds good. I feel like, I feel like we have... Uh, We've kind of decided to go with the Flatbush Beacon Center on Tuesday, March 29th. Is there, are there any objections to that? I mean, we've talked through some of the options here and we can always reach out again to Major R. Owens, but I don't want to slow down our movement here by trying to go back to them. Matthias. Don't change the winning team, Primo. Yeah. You know, you don't break up, you know, the, the 97 Bulls, right? The dynasty, the dynasty. <laughs> um. So Prima, I'm gonna shop the dates with the charter school and the host school. Um, you know, it's pretty, I can say we're, we're good, but I just wanna make sure and be respectful to everybody in the building so that we're, everybody knows um, that we're gonna do something on that date. Would April 5th, which is the following Tuesday, be okay as well, just like as an alter, alternative day? Let me take a look. I mean, it sounds fine to me. Um, yeah, I mean, it works for me on my calendar too. So let's put those two dates out there uh, to your to your folks in the building and then you let us know what comes back. Okay, great. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, what, can you repeat those dates one more time? Tuesday, March 29th and Tuesday, April 5th. Thank you. Uh, once we confirm, I'll go ahead and put in a permit uh, for the space to secure school safety and, you know, custodial services, uh, you know, for cleaning up afterward and all that. Okay, fantastic. All right. Um, let's move on to the things that we actually need to accomplish to pull this off. Um, once we get a date finalized or we can start moving on, I think a lot of this before a date is finalized. So I listed out three things that I think we need to do in order to begin moving forward. Um, the first was putting together a flyer and an event registration page. We can always change the date based on what Jawara and Denise come back with. But um, is anybody, is anyone feeling particularly uh, inspired um, graphically, uh, lingu <laughs> linguistically, to put together a, a flyer and a short event description. Uh, we also, in the past, have used Eventbrite for registration, uh, which is easy to, uh, to collect names. Uh, it also sends out automatic reminders. Well, that's also because we were doing it on Zoom, um, so it made it a little bit easier. But we, I know that CB9 has Eventbrite, so we could, we could, we could use it again. Um, any volunteers for a flyer? Um, I could volunteer to do a flyer. Joyce, I love it. All right, you're in there, Joyce. When would you need it by and what would be the information you want on that flyer? Yeah. Um, I'll let other, Matthias, you look primed to say something. Yeah, so what I'll do is, uh, Joyce, I can send you our, our fl flyers from previous years so you can kind of get an idea what we did and maybe work off that or maybe you know okay perfect so just a general template until the dates are official yeah yeah i think it's like you know matthias will send this to you but it's like you know Brooklyn like community for nine is you don't mind if you can joyce if you can put your email in the chat i'll just email it 
yeah. last two or, and definitely the last two of them. Oh, to note the chat isn't activated. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I'll send it after the meeting to you, Matai. Miss Burke was actually the creator of those. So, you know, um, just to, you know, not, not, not give her the props. Uh, but she did a fantastic thank job. You, thank so you, thank I'll, you, thank you. I'll send them to you, um, Mia, or you should probably have them, no? Buried somewhere. I'll just send them. Send it to Mia. Mia will send it around with like the meeting minutes or something like that. Or if you send it to me, I can send it as follow up. I'll Even though I've been really bad at it. Send it to me at CC Primo. Just for the community to know, the only thing that we require, as usual, when we have any kind of events, is just a sign in sheet for everybody that's coming in. That's the only thing that we require. Just so everybody, you know, I, I know there are some people who I've never met on here, so I just want to throw that out there for everybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to have to cancel the event then. The uh, sign-in sheet is way too large of a lift. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can't handle that. Um, but good I have a question. Um, Dwar, you were saying that you had an event recently that you required people to put their vaccine, vaccine information in prior to arriving, so it was already there. Did I understand that well, correctly? No. Well, they did. Uh, we did a citizenship uh, application assistance. So oh. with citizenship now, they had to send in advance that they were vaccinated but regardless of that because you know we're a doe building we have to show upon entry you have to show vaccination anyway so they had to show in person as well so it was two systems that you know it was duplicated but you know it, okay. it's necessary evil yeah okay all right so we we've got joyce on the flyer <clears throat> And the language. Two more pieces were outreach based. <clears throat> so thinking about outreach to local schools and outreach to vendors. So we want to get kids in the building and we want to get vendors in the building. And so um, on the first one, I would imagine there are some folks with some expertise here thinking Talicia, I think that, uh, you know, the folks over at Flatbush Beacon can reach out to their schools. If you have any contacts also uh, for other local schools, um, that might be, that would be welcome. Um, and then Matthias, I don't know if you got the hookup with local schools. You might know a school or two. Valerie, I know, knows a school or two. Um, but I think it would be great to have one central person kind of owning the outreach. Um, Anybody feel up to that task? And this isn't like reaching out to the schools, like all of the, in, like within the network? Yeah, within like, um, within the, the community, I guess. Um, I think we could, we could probably invite students from outside the community, but we would want to start with students inside of the community. So our local high schools. Um, yeah. Um, I can definitely reach out to the connects that I um, reached out in the previous years, um, that are like Prospect Heights, um, and I think I might have um, some other connects. I can definitely check, but I would say like my list is not as extensive. Um, I can try to find a way to get like a listserv of like guidance counselors and things like that. Yeah, awesome. If I feel like then you're you're the point if you're cool with that for school outreach. And we'll we can all share our contacts with you. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. I agree. It is perfect. <laughs> um, okay. And then the last piece um, is reaching out to vendors. And so um, Ada, I know you emailed me asking if we should populate um, a list. And I think in the past, we've kind of broken up the outreach, but maybe it makes sense to centralize it. And we just kind of all put the, um, the vendors and their contact information on one Google spreadsheet. We had, the, um, we had the Google spreadsheet from 2019, and that's what I used to reach out to folks. But uh, unsurprisingly, about half of the emails bounce back because folks have changed jobs. Um, and so, I mean, phone calls might have to be placed um, we might have to get new contacts and we might have to add some new vendors to the list. Um, I'm happy to, to own this unless anybody else feels passionately about 
y'all have been so gracious in volunteering already that uh, I should do something. So I'm happy to do this. Maybe somebody else wants to join me in this task of vendors. Any, any co-chairs of the vendor list? Happy to help out. All right. I just have of a course. question. Um, okay. The vendors that, that are going to be reached out to, they're vendors that can offer opportunities to our teenagers as far as work, internship, or anything like that? That's, that's, okay. the, that's the goal. Yep. Okay. So, for example, the two people who wrote back to us were, um, what, is, what is Riel's organization? Not sure. Outward Bound, Trailblazers. Uh, so Trailblazers does, you know, <clears throat> camp counselor, basically trains camp counselors uh, from the local community. Um, so that's a great opportunity. And then um, the FDNY was the other group that responded. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, we, will, we, we will reach out to Medgar Evers SYP um, great. at BR Medgar Evers College. That's an easy um, fit for, you know, for that. And I think we'll also get uh, Medgar Evers College Beacon program to table. Um, because every site needs needs workers, so we'll, we'll we'll do the neck the neck angle definitely. Awesome, love that. Ideas from other folks, people that we should be reaching out to. Um, I also we have uh, OAs, so we can have our office. They they ha they were at the Citizen Now, and I got the lady's email, so I can forward you her information because they offer programming in terms of training and and uh, GD for our youth, so. Love that. You said it's called OA? OAS, yeah, Office of Adult and Continuing Education. Okay, cool. I would say just, you know, uh, the all, all the summer camp programs, uh, they hire um, young people, um, after school programs, that kind of stuff. They're kind of similar to what Trailblaze is doing, uh, YMCA. Uh, we had a bun bunch of them last time. So those are always good. Some students um, that um, work at Legman's and we're also working at um, Burlington and Factory. So I think it's worth like reaching out to them, saying as though they are hiring like high school age kids um, to see what they can offer. Alicia, you sound like you're actually inside an apple. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> I heard Wegmans, uh, but I don't know that I heard too much outside of Wegmans. So you should email that list. Okay, we'll do. Barbara, did you want to add something? Um, no, because <clears throat> I don't really know any vendors offhand, or but I will start, you know, exploring that so I can hopefully be a, be a help. Okay, great, fantastic. Sorry, I thought you came off mute, so I thought you wanted to say something. No. But... <laughs> no. <laughs> I just never put it back when I asked the question. <laughs> no worries. Okay, sounds good. Joyce, go for it. Um, I was just thinking, I have some friends who work with real estate, does real estate, but they also work and do financial education for youth. So I can probably try to reach out to them, even though they're not, um, it's not a, I'm not sure if it's a job opportunity, but I think financial education is important Yeah. for youth. Totally, we we agree. We've done a um we've done a financial education event both the last two years, so it's definitely something that's that's big for us. And it might end up being the second event that we host this year too. But it's no harm in inviting them to the jobs fair as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, what am I, what am I not talking about or thinking about that I should be talking about or thinking about? I have Matthias that I have to track down tables. Um, and so I will talk with Mia about that. I think that we also are going to, you know, keep our eyes open for like food and, and water. Although I wonder if, if everybody's vaccinated, we have a higher risk tolerance for people eating and drinking. Although our initial plan was just to send people home with like a bag of food instead of eating at the event itself. Um, what are thoughts and feelings on eating at an event where everyone is vaccinated? No, no, no. <laughs> we can send everybody home with food bags. We can stick with that. Uh, we'll just have to go out and track down some money for that. Um, um, I know like previous years, uh, someone had donated flyers. If we're gonna do like the goodie bags, maybe we can, um, 
print up like informational flyers in terms of like having like maybe CB9's uh, social media information on it. So that like, so just connect with the kids um, or something like that. Something like memorable or like a save the day for future events or join us or something so that, or sticker, even if it's not a flyer, maybe like a sticker on the bag, sort of. Love that. Also, we just, you just need boots on the ground, right? Day of, you just need people to get there early, um, people to be there throughout the event. Um, there's always, you know, uh, you know, when it comes to signing in, you need people um, at the front. Uh, we had people outside in the past, uh, um, still with flyers, and also just to kind of guide people in, um, and then just kind of on the floor as well. Uh, so you probably need, um, I want to say like, you know, what, 10 people. Yeah. Yeah. That Everybody sounds right. Committee, obviously, you know, unless, you know, there's something. Uh, yeah. Hopefully the whole committee can attend and maybe we can recruit a handful of folks outside of the committee to, uh, to work it as well. I know that, you know, Warren and Fred will show up for anything if we ask them and we can probably get like Mia, Mia was homeboy's name. Dante, we get Dante. You doubt, you doubt it, he'll come. Um, Jawara, that photo is mean, bro. When does the album drop? Like, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, that's all good stuff to think about. I think, like, you know, we create the the materials and we and we get out the um, the communication to both schools and vendors we can probably handle a lot of the rest in between um seeing as we have over three months to carry out this event which is a good amount of time uh i have to put together a budget for cb9 um for dante uh which is something that i will be sure to do uh, mia please bother me if i don't do it um and uh, also we'll start to do a little bit of fundraising um so that we can have a budget of some sort for this event outside of the things that CB9 will pay for, which is almost nothing. Um, it'd be nice to be able to offer some gift cards and stuff as um, you know, raffle prizes, incentives for, for kids to come. Although I know that the real prize here is a job opportunity. Um, so raffle stuff may not be necessary. Um, and we'll reach out about flyers. Uh, I know that, uh, Berman um, had made t-shirts in the past also for the event. Um, so there's a lot of people who are excited to support this and would be willing to support this. And we just have to reach out to them. Uh, so as soon as Joyce, is, we have the, the event date from Flatbush Beacon. And as soon as we have a flyer, we're gonna be ready to rock on um, getting support from other folks. But uh, I feel like we've had an incredibly productive and decisive meeting already uh but it, are there other pieces that are missing that you'd like to talk about tonight before i release you back to your families and your lives no 48 minutes mia how do you feel about are we number one yet <laughs> um <Sure>. I, <laughs> okay that's all i needed um I appreciate you all for being here. Special thanks to the folks from Flatbush Beacon for coming out and offering your space and your support um, and your time to our students and to making this happen. And thank you all for coming and, and sharing your thoughts. And um, I think everything you've shared tonight and said tonight has helped us make a way smarter decision around what we'd like to do with this event. Thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. All right, y'all. Have a good night. Thank Have you a for great having me. See you next time. Primo, I sent over the flyer, Bye. Matthias. I emailed it. Okay, great. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Stay safe. Good night. Good night. Take care, Bye. everyone.